here is another one of our 625 square foot house roofs and it's going to have about a half inch per foot slope or about a 0.5 and 12 and I went ahead and extended the roof framing on this side here to provide you with one example on how to build it and then went ahead and installed a rim joist over here to provide you with another example and I would imagine even though the other one is going to be a little stronger I don't think you would ever have a problem with that method there so on this side here we have the same wall framing throughout the rest of the house and over on the other side we have the rake wall or the extended wall framing and keep in mind that you can use both methods on either side and I'm only designing it this way to provide you with two different examples. So I can have a rake wall on this side and this side, or I can have this wall here on this side and this one here on that side. And I hope that makes sense. But if you do end up building it this way, so be it. And we do have fire blocks here. And you might even be able to get away with just using one top plate. I don't see why you would need two top plates here. And that might even provide you with a better connection. Uh, next up let's go ahead and take a look at it from this view here so that we can install our joist. And we're going to be using TJIs. The TJIs are going to be 14 inches tall and that's to allow for a thicker insulation and possibly better ventilation. So again TJI truss joist and we're going to need to install some ceiling backing. So we're going to be using 2x6s here and here. 2x4s over here along with 2x4s over here and we're going to install some 2x4s over here and I do have other ceiling backing installed on some of the other videos you can always go back and take a look at them the truss joists are 24 inches on center and the ceiling backing here can nail into the wall framing studs and then of course you can get a better idea at the fire blocking. The fire blocking is to prevent air or fire from passing through the wall framing and then into the ceiling. And I know you're probably thinking, well, what's going to prevent it from just going right through the drywall into the ceiling? And it won't. This is just another safety precaution in case it doesn't go through the ceiling, but goes through the wall framing. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the upper view with the rake wall here. And all I did to calculate the height of the rake wall was went up five and a half inches to the center because I just went ahead and ripped some two by six and a half to get two roof rafters that were exactly the same, one here and one over here. And hopefully that makes sense. So we have a two by six here and then we have our blocks. And I went ahead and installed the blocking on this side right here, even with the one side. And then these shaped boards can be toenailed into the ceiling joist. Or I'd imagine you could even nail up from the bottom if the manufacturer would allow that. So like I said, I went ahead and installed the blocks over a little bit. You can put them in the center if you want to. But sometimes this will give the electrician and the plumber, if they need it, a little more room to install their pipes and wires. So again, you can see it's nice and even on this side but not directly in the center underneath the ridge. And of course, this is something that you could go over with your structural engineer. And we can see how everything's dying in here. We're going to get some nice nailing here. And next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board spacers. We're going to use two by fours. And these will provide us with an inch and a half space between the back of the fascia board and the front of the wall framing. So I went ahead and provided you with two different examples over here. So we're not extending the ridge past the wall framing. We're using the spacer boards. However, on the other side, I went ahead and ran the ridge past an inch and a half. And again, just to provide you with another thing you can do or choose not to do, just another idea that you might even be able to use on different projects in the future. Next up, let's take a look at the lower corner here. And you can see where the rim joist is making a nice corner. If I used a truss joist over here, then I wouldn't have a solid surface here. I would have to fill the truss joist in. And of course, that would be the distance between the upper and lower cord on the truss. So that's why I went ahead and used a solid fill material. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board and then take a bottom view of it. Again, we have an inch and a half gap here. 
and that's going to be all the way around the perimeter. Next up, let's take a look at how I lowered the fascia board along with the backing board here. And it's probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less. And this is to make sure that I have a nice smooth transition to keep everything straight. If I go ahead and install both of these boards, even or flush with the top of the ceiling framing, then I could end up with a flat spot on the roof that could trap water above the finished roofing materials. Next up, let's go ahead and pan out. And it's not a bad looking building here, at least I don't think so. Next up, let's take a look at how everything is going to finish out here so that we can, of course, install our roof sheathing. And even though I went ahead and installed some smaller strips here, you might need to install wider ones. Some engineers require minimum roof sheathing sizes of anywhere between 16 and 24 inches, meaning that this part right here wouldn't be approved by your engineer. And of course, let's not forget that you might need a center load support footing, depending upon whether or not the joist can span the width of the building or the entire length of the building. Here is another viewer requested video. The individual wanted to know how they could create a sloped roof on a flat roof or a structure with level joist. And to do that, we're going to need to figure out the length of the roof that is going to be sloping. And in our example here, we're going to be using 10 feet, a 20 foot span that we will be breaking up into two sections. Now the minimum slope for a roof is usually going to be a quarter of an inch per foot. And an example of that would be that it needs to rise one quarter of an inch vertically for every 12 inches horizontally. And if I take a quarter of an inch and multiply it by 10, I'm going to end up with 2.5 inches, allowing us to use a 2 by 4 that is 3.5 inches. Remember, I said the minimum slope is going to be a quarter of an inch per foot. However, it can always be larger, unless specified on the building plans. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to use a 2 by 4 and just simply draw a line from one side to the other side and then simply cut the piece of wood into two pieces. Then I'm going to take each piece and attach it to the existing roof. And you can use nails or building hardware to do something like this. Obviously you won't be able to use a three and a quarter inch nail on the sections that might be larger than two inches but you can definitely use the nails on the lower part of the rip strips. And then we're going to use toenails to attach the larger sections, or the taller sections, I should say, that we wouldn't be able to drive a nail straight down through the top of it in. And you're going to need to have the angled nails on both sides, maybe 16 inches on center, 24 inches on center. And you can always use building hardware if you need to. And for something like this, I would try to block it after if you could. I like to block it like this with a larger block that will help me connect all of these pieces together. However, if you're working with an existing building, you might not be able to do that. You'll just use smaller blocks. And thanks for watching. To learn more about home building and repairs, visit us at our website. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. See you next time.